Thank you very much, Simon. Uh, good evening, everybody, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Ferdi Einerke, and um, I've been uh, on the stock market for, gosh, 37 odd years, been involved in this game. Uh, and uh, I'm, I've been with AFI Focus uh, since the start, inception in 2000. Uh, I've um, experienced many crashes on the market, uh, on the floor days, when I used to trade on the floor, you know, that was quite a, an experience that time. It was a, a very interesting era. And um, uh, the 1987 crash, and, you know, after that, we've had all kinds of things, the Asian contagion, and so it went on. And uh, I spoke to a colleague of mine earlier, and, you know, we just looked at this current market and again, we're seeing this whole big pullback and it's probably one of the most difficult kind of markets that we've experienced in, in certainly in my, uh, my, my time that I've been on the market. But I think there probably are some very interesting opportunities that might come up now and uh, I will talk about it. But I think the, the uh, exchange traded fund business and I think the tax free investing is giving an opportunity to at least mitigate the risk that we are seeing. But I'll come in. I'll get into that uh, a little bit later. So just a little bit about us, about Afri Focus, um, to just intro, by way of introduction, that we've been a stockbroker member of the JSE since 2000, and then uh, we also joined the Zar X um, exchange as a member since 2007. We service institutional and private clients. Uh, Zarex does a lot of the uh, um, agriculture and all those types of um, co-ops and things like that. And I think there's some growth opportunities in this market uh, for us as well. We, um, we produce independent research and offer extensive investment insights and execution of trades and a personalized service is what we really pride ourselves on uh, to all of our clients. We recently also obtained a... a um, financial services provider license, which now allows us to expand a little bit into the broader wealth management field, which is quite exciting for us. Um, so uh, without any further ado, I'd like to just um, get into, well, some of our services, yeah, investments, uh, ad hoc investments, buying of, of shares on the market, um, stockbroking, online trading, uh, the pure sort of stockbroking services, um, portfolio management that we do as well as a team of, of portfolio managers. We sit together, we have regular meetings and we discuss portfolios for various risk profiles. Uh, and then we, as I mentioned, are now starting to move into the wealth management field where we can start to offer now unit trusts already uh, offshore and get onto the platform that we've made a deal with and be able to do that. We will hope to also get into the retirement annuity and pensions field, but we're still not there. Uh, it's new to us at the moment, but we're quite excited about this new development for, for um, our company. Uh, and then, of course, the tax-free savings accounts. Uh, just recently, we had the Business Day Top Stoke Stockbrokers Awards, which they do annually uh, by way of questionnaires that get sent out to clients, and it's done in a very, very uh, 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 big comprehensive way and manner, and we get a lot of feedback from clients. And so we were quite proud to have been rated in the top 10 of SA stockbrokers now, which is for the first time we've moved into the top 10 of overall, um, and rated first in the top advice-based brokers, where by advice on the phone, where we talk to people about various things, uh, not just about the shares, but you know, just generally about investment and and so on. And then we were rated fourth uh, in the best tax-free savings account um, and top 10 in people's choice. So uh, just a couple of things there for us. And so we're proud to, to have achieved a nice certificate for all of these specific um, ratings. So um, getting into, I think, just to obviously for with the younger generation as well and for anybody that wants to start into an investment, I think it's very important that you need to look at where you are and are you ready for this? Uh, and as we know, the markets are volatile and, and you've got to understand what your investment game is all about. So you've got to ask yourself, I think, a couple of questions. We uh, are getting into now doing needs analysis for our clients when we speak to new clients. We want to know exactly what their setup is. For instance, are you employed currently? Do you have any debt that you want to still pay off and things, in particular short-term expensive debt. You know, I think there are differences with debt. Obviously, um, 
financing growing assets is another story. But, you know, I think it's important to have a look at all of this. Do you have insurance? Do you have a medical cover? And then what is your particular risk profile? And I think this is extremely important because, as we know, time horizon that you have available for investing uh, is vital. And what is your end goal? And so can you take risk? Can you, are you able to go into the equity market or do you need to go into a balanced portfolio or would you like to look at income or all of those aspects needs to be decided before I think you, you make the move into investing. So I think just a, a graph over here, this is the all share index. Um, and just to, just to point out again, a few things here, quite a, quite a long way back, since about 1996 odd that I could go back on this particular uh, index. And you can see some of the moves here. Here we had the situation where the U.S. went into Iraq after 9-11. That move down there don't look very big. But I think if you just look at the percentage where it's come from uh, to where it actually went to in, in that, at that stage, it was a very big drop. And, um, and, and so then you had... You had quite a nice recovery, and then again, you had a, a pretty big drop here. And then you resumed into a quite a big bull market that took you all the way up to about 2007. And then we had the, the 2008 credit crisis, and that we, un, we still remember very well how, uh, how the markets reacted. And that was also a very scary time for investors, um, as we are kind of experiencing again right now. And I think I, I just want to make the point that you know, all of these events that happened, we, we went then over here where we had Nenigate, uh, where we then came down quite dramatically as well. So there's always reasons. And then you can see recently we reached the top and now we had quite a big drop off here again. And I think the main issue for me is always when we see this happening is that prior to, there's always a reason, there's always a trigger that comes through. But I think ultimately it's overvaluation of assets, um, <clears throat> shares, people pay up, they part, they just go part of the momentum that goes up. And, you know, this is what pushes markets often into an overvalued situation. And then you are going to get corrections. And so I think they are important because then, then you, you can start getting some opportunities again. So just getting to the, the benefits of tax-free savings. And I think it's, it can be exciting. Tax-free investments can be exciting. I think the only one thing, and I speak to people, is obviously that we'd all hope that at some point they, they will allow more than the 33,000 that they, they're allowing at the moment. Um, but at this point in time, and I think it's going to be reviewed on a regular basis, uh, because I really think it's a very good way to get people to save or to invest and to get into the market um, for whatever goals they might want to achieve. So, that's really what it's about. It's saving without paying tax. You can invest in a diversified ETF or exchange-traded fund portfolio. <clears throat> Achieve your life goals, whether you want to save up for a nice holiday or you want to finance a child or grandchild's uh, education, or whatever it may be for supplementing your retirement one day. All of these goals are there. And it's easy and it's affordable as well. The important note, I just wanted to make one note, and this is what we did pick up, uh, is that foreign ETFs are subject to offshore dividend tax, which is not recovered. So there is on the foreign-based, like Signia US or any of those, a dividend tax which is not recoverable. Um, the broker or wherever you are or the issuer of that uh, will deduct that on your behalf automatically like with dividends in a normal portfolio. So you don't have to do anything, uh, but you'll see on, on your portfolio statement that if you had earned a dividend from any of the foreign listed um, ETFs that the dividend doesn't recover that, that it's a 20% tax um, as well. But that's all. The rest of it is literally tax-free, the interest earned, the capital gain that you may achieve or whatever, and the local dividends on all the local uh, ETFs, they all tax-free. So what is an exchange-traded fund? Um, it's basically a fund that tracks a specific index representing a basket of underlying assets, such as equity, bonds, property, preference shares, 
An ETF trades just like a normal listed share on the stock exchange and is regularly updated in terms of a mandate by the relevant issuer. So if it's Signia or if it's um, uh, one of the other uh, Investec or whoever has the ETF management, they will automatically update any um, uh, man, uh, uh, you know, terms of that automatically will be done by them. And then just an illustration here, which is quite significant and shows you over that period of time, uh, assuming that you're going to have a rate of growing at 10% per annum, a 25% tax rate, the tax investment of 500,000 Rand will be worth 1.8 after 25 odd years. And you can see the significant saving uh, as compared to uh, uh, an investment that were taxed. Um, and so it's, it's quite significant over a long term period. And I think that's the important part of it. <clears throat> the contributions we know is currently 33,000 Rand per annum and it's 500,000 Rand over a lifetime. And so it will take you as a new investor now to do that if you're gonna do it every year about 16 odd years to, to have put away the 500,000. But as I said, it might change and hopefully it will actually be more that one, that one can put away. Withdrawals, and this is quite an important point, you you can withdraw money from your tax-free account if you're suddenly in need of funds. But just to bear in mind that there could be a problem if, um, if, you, if you withdraw uh, in the same tax year, it's fine. There's no problem with that. You can withdraw 10,000 or whatever amount you need. And, and so you won't be deemed to, to, to be uh, given a penalty by SARS, but if you deposited 33,000 Rand, you withdraw the money and then redeposit 33,000 in the same tax year again, then you are at risk where the receiver will then be deemed that a total deposit of 66,000 Rand was actually put into your tax free account that year and therefore will be penalized on 33,000 by paying your marginal tax on that amount. So be very careful when you take 10,000 out and you've already done your full contribution, uh, wait until the following tax year then before you put it back because otherwise you could compromise your tax-free statement or status. <clears throat> so the approved exchange traded fund investments that, that's approved by Treasury is all we can invest in. You can't buy individual shares or anything like that. You can only buy exchange traded funds, but it's very broad. You have a large choice. And I've just put a list up of some of it, for instance, the South African equity ones, and these are all with different terms uh, and so on. And so you've got the, the top 40, uh, you've got the core shares top 50, or you can go into the res uh, uh, resources or financial or industrial, whichever you choose. So there's a really broad range available. And then you've got your global equity as well. So you can buy into the US, Japan, the, the Europe, or you can just buy the world index if you feel you want a bit more of a spread and uh, not have that one particular regional risk. You can buy the world index. And then you've got the multi-asset uh, funds as well, which automatically already is a balanced fund, which has got different asset classes in it, equity, bonds, some property, some preference or cash or stuff like that. Um, property, local, global property, and then bonds as well. Inflation linked and normal government bonds you can buy as an asset class. So you can see that the preference shares as well, you've got a pretty good choice and range of investments to build a portfolio up over a period of time. So and I think while we're on the topic of exchange traded funds, you can do this in a normal portfolio as well, obviously. Um, it doesn't just have to be in a tax-free account. And I think with the market that we're seeing at the moment and the volatility that we're seeing, and I know some, some, some investors thrive on this kinds of volatility, um, but uh, you, there's high risk uh, involved. And specifically, if you're in a concentrated portfolio and you might have a lot of shares that, that uh, you have the same impact, 
uh, or you have a, a big percentage in one or two shares and, you know, you get the kind of moves that we're seeing currently in MediClinic and, you know, EOH and MTN and things like this. Good companies, very big names, but massive moves. It's quite, um, uh, it, it's really quite uh, difficult to be, to be able to, to work with that and, you know, to take that, that uh, knock. So I think the exchange traded fund at least gives you quite a nice way to structure a portfolio as well, uh, not just a tax-free one, but you know that you can use to get that benefit of diversification, global diversification, and then around that, you know, if you that way inclined, you can still buy your individual stocks within that portfolio. So I think it just takes a bit of a risk away um, from investing. And I think just for the fact sheets for the exchange traded funds, you can go onto this website. Uh, the, the ETFSA.co.za, which gives you all the information that you'll need uh, on any of these funds that are listed. Uh, and it's very helpful because, you know, it looks like something like that. And I know it's a bit small print here, but I just wanted to, to, to show you this and you'll see it nicely on the website. But it basically gives you a lot of information that will show you the top 10 holdings of that particular fund. It will tell you their whole strategy as to how they go about things. And it will give you the past performance figures, uh, one, three, five years. And so you can make a decision on these and say, you know, this is the kind of fund you'd like to go for. And so there's a lot of information available onto that uh, website to, to, to get before you go in. So just a bit of a technical view on some of the um, different types of asset type classes within, within the exchange traded funds. You've got Satrix. Signia World Index, and this, um, again, you can go into that ETF fact sheet and you can see the regions that they're invested in and what shares and they're in. They'll be in the top tech top stocks like Apple and Facebook and all of these things. And uh, that's just how that share has performed um, since they came to the market. And so from about 2006, I think, over here, uh, you can see it's had a pretty nice move, um, or 2009, sorry. Um, it's had a pretty nice big move, but it does fluctuate, and now we've seen quite a big pullback. And so it's not just our market, it's global at the moment. We uh, are living in a world at the moment that's uh, got a lot of instability politically, with trade wars going on between the U.S. and China. Um, and, and I think just a lot of news flow currently as well that goes on out there, and uh, it affects those markets globally and so you are going to have these moves uh, in the market for sure and then you've got the local JSC Satrix 40 uh, looks of course like the all share index that I showed first um, on, on the start of my presentation and there you can see this massive drop off that we've had over here and it does become difficult to say you know is it time to buy now uh, but yeah, uh, it's probably the time to start looking. And I think what we do find, it might not necessarily be the value in the index itself, but within the index, there are certain companies that are already, I think, trading at some pretty good value. Um, and you've just got to withheld, you know, or withstand the volatility in the short to medium term. But I, I believe that if one starts to buy with a long-term view, when you get these sharp pullbacks, uh, you are going to be rewarded eventually, uh, which is what we've seen in history with equity and so on. Um, and then you've got the property track. So you've had a very big drop off in the property sector. And there as well, you know, when does the opportunity start to come? And I think one has to just look at the returns and maybe start to say, you know, how does this compare to a cash investment? Is it starting to look from an after tax point of view? that you can now get a better return if the dividends are maintained or um, the uh, you know, distributions that they pay are maintained and it's starting to give you a pretty good yield, then I think it's the time to say, you know, forget about this volatility. You are starting to see a pretty good return on the asset and, and you could go into that. And that's just the government bond ETF. Uh, and so just a, a different asset class. Uh, with a different risk profile, a little bit slightly higher than just cash or money market, but um, also not a bad return. But always remember that as soon as you are in an asset that gives you a slightly higher return than just cash in the bank, then it does come along with, with some increased risk as well. <clears throat> 
So which ETF would one invest in and what should the investment <coughs> strategy be? We basically said that the way that we, th we would advise people that just want to have this different, uh, uh, these different um, risk profiles, if you're looking for, looking for a low risk option like income, then we would simply leave the investment in cash. Um, and you will earn interest at the rate of the JSE <laughs> trustees with us. Now, uh, we probably can't offer such a high rate as some of the banks out there, um, but uh, it's still not bad. And it's just an interest rate return. And I think it's in the vicinity of around about between somewhere between six and six and a half to seven percent. Um, and so that's what we do there. Then for the medium risk option, when you want to look at a balanced, we simply say buy into the new funds multi-asset growth ETF, um, which includes assets such as equities, bonds and cash all within that. Or for the medium to high risk option, you'll su we'll suggest equity and then you'll go for the uh, Satrix 40 and you'll have the spread there. Can you choose your own with us? Yes, we say you can choose your own options. Of course, you can structure your own ETF portfolio and just simply uh, speak to a portfolio manager with ourselves and then you, know, you can decide what kind of ETF you want to go into. And I think that's quite a good option where we can actually discuss in more detail, you know, what, what it is that you'd like to achieve and, and then decide which is the best way to go. So just on that front, I think some guidelines that I've put together. So an income portfolio, low to medium risk. I've put low to medium risk here because here we've just got some other assets included like the core shares property, global property, preference shares and cash. You can see the cash portion will be quite high. This is just a guideline. It's not necessarily the allocation right now, and this can change over time where we feel if, if we start to feel that preference shares is giving us a better value return, then we would probably increase that by with preference shares and reduce cash to an extent. But that ultimately is based for uh, on an income type of portfolio um, that you can put together. And then a balanced portfolio, simply just spread it between cash, JSE, top 40 shares, bonds, and some core property. And, uh, and then uh, you'll go into an equity portfolio, uh, which is um, also medium to high risk. And then you'll see Signia World. We'll give some global uh, equity in there. The core shares top 50 on our local market, the Satrix dividend, mid, mid cap again. Those, those ones can change. You know, you might want to go for the financial one or the industrial index add it in because it might have been, uh, you know, fallen, it might have fallen to a le level where it's creating some good value for you. And then the international equity portfolio is more classified, I think, in the high risk profile because here yeah, you've got all the world markets, Satrix emerging, the global property, global core shares, Signia world, and you've also got a currency risk included in that as well. So the moment where you're starting to go into a international equity investment, then you've got to understand the risk includes the fluctuation uh, with currencies as well. Just uh, why AFRI focus? Uh, there's some folders outside um, and some information that you can take along with you if you'd like. Um, we feel that we offer a low cost option. Uh, for investing into uh, into uh, tax-free investments. One-on-one uh, -on -one relationship with your portfolio manager. You can contact them at any time and discuss things. Uh, we're there for you. Uh, full transparency. You can see what happens. If we buy an, into an ETF, you'll get a broker's note or agency note the following morning. So you can actually see exactly what's happening. You've got our website. You can log into the website and you can view your portfolio at any time and you can pick up statements and things like that. 24 hour online access actually. Uh, debit order facilities available and also lump sum investments. And then multiple investment options, uh, which you know is what we can discuss and structure a nice, uh, a nice portfolio for you. So just the cost breakdown, we charge a management fee of 0.5% uh, on all the tax-free uh, accounts uh, per annum. So it's like 0 0.12 and a half per quarter um, in arrear. 
And so it's very reasonable. Uh, I think, you know, in comparison to the market and industry out there, we we believe we're quite competitive on that. Uh, and then the transaction cost always will happen on a purchase and sale, of course. There are transaction costs, which we can't really get away from. But it's not a portfolio that should be traded regularly. And I think that's the issue here, is that uh, my, my idea with the tax-free investment is that you can structure it and you are potentially going to leave it for a long time. You don't want to tamper with it too much. And so, you know, if you do changes here and there, then the cost for that is not, it's, it's not crazy. But if you're going to do that on a regular basis, the cost will start to, to impact. And so you've got to watch that. There's no admin cost. So just an example of a cost, for instance, if you're going to buy for, say, 32,000, you're going to use and you're going to leave just 1,000 Rand for a little bit of, um, of leverage on some cash in the account, then that's what it comes to. We've got a basic charge of 80 Rand. Your brokerage comes to that. Um, there's an ins uh, insider trading levy. These are JSE charges, JSC uh, securities charge, and then VAT. Um, and that what, 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 that's what it comes to for a cost of doing a trade, 1.95% uh, about. Um, for that size of transaction, we feel that it's quite reasonable. And as, as I said, you know, it's not a regular occurrence that you're going to do trades. You're going to position yourself potentially and uh, leave it uh, as is. I thought just to end off the, uh, the presentation this evening, um, we are right at six o'clock already. And so I might be quite early, Simon, um, but we can chat and, you know, I'll be glad to take some questions and we can talk about the markets. But it's quite interesting, and I've shown this a few times, and many of you may have seen this bit of market psychology that, that uh, we, we get and just how people think, how we all think. Um, and I think it's just quite interesting, and maybe this is exactly what happened this year. Uh, at the beginning of the year, we were all quite excited. There was change. There was thrill because we had a new change um, uh, in, political, in the political circles, and everybody started to get a bit more excited. And as we know, we got up to here, it's euphoria, it was ramaphoria for us. And uh, then it started to turn a bit, and then you start getting a bit anxious, and things start to turn down a little bit, and then it becomes denial, and you actually start to say to yourself, well, that's a temporary setback. I'm a long-term investor. I'm not going to worry about any of this. Um, but you can see that point there, it's a point of maximum financial risk. And this is, as I said earlier, that uh, what normally, uh, you know, precedes a crash in the market is high valuations. And this is often where people do get caught into the markets. They don't look at the valuation, they're following the crowd uh, and they get caught into. And I think this is one of the things that can happen is that you can experience long term capital loss. Um, if you do that, entry into investments is, is vital. And it's often not easy. Uh, we, uh, even on the market, uh, don't, you know, don't expect sometimes that you get the news that comes out. And so we get caught uh, as well. But um, that's when something structurally goes wrong. We do try and pick up value in the market. But, you know, that's, I think, ultimately the thing is the value that you go into the market uh, is so important. And then, and then that turns into fear and then desperation, a bit of panic. I don't quite know where we are right now. We've had a pretty big pullback. If you look at the index, I looked the other day, I think we probably were down from the top in the vicinity of about 15-odd percent on the actual index. But within the index itself and some shares inside there, there's been some really major, major pullbacks of good names, 40, 50, 60 percent and plus. Um, not to mention the Stein of issue. I mean, that was just the start of unfortunate, unfortunately, also a bit of lack of trust sometimes. And what happens now is that the company just comes out with something that the market doesn't like, and then they really do get punished. And I think sometimes probably overly so. And I think what we are seeing as well in this market is probably a lot of short-term trading, a lot of uh, derivative trading, and that drives things as well. When it goes into a specific direction, these guys will get out, they might get margin calls, they're forced out, and so you get very big moves. Uh, I haven't really seen the kinds of moves that we are so regularly getting. I mean, I've seen moves before, but, you know, generally it would recover. But uh, today, 
it's just amazing how our how, how markets move in terms of percentages just in one day, for instance. So it, it's quite dramatic. And so I think we're probably starting to get to a point here, capitulation. I think maybe despondency is where we're at. I think if we talk to our clients now at the moment, we can just feel uh, that they're very despondent for right reasons. And I think we all feel the same. We're human. You know, you think that... Um, the, the market, the political situation at the moment is still uncertain. We've got the uncertain policy issue with land uh, and just the world at the moment, generally the trade wars and things like this going on out there. Uh, and I think also just, again, the markets were used to the quantitative easing that we were seeing from the United States and other parts in the world, and that's come to an end now. They've been unwinding that, and uh, there's a chance of higher interest rates slowly coming through in the United States, inflation could start to tick up. And these are the things that do cause markets to then pull back quite a bit. But I think what will ultimately happen, uh, and it's very difficult to, to get optimistic when markets are like this, but ultimately it's the point of maximum financial opportunity very often. Because if you look back to the chart I showed, when you see those very big crashes, it's always fairly brief that you have that and then suddenly and you don't always expect when but it turns and people will say they'll wait they'll wait and wait and you can miss the boat very easily because when it starts to turn up again this is what happens from there it becomes a hope again relief optimism and you come back to all of this again and then often people get caught again and starting to pay to pay high prices so that's my presentation. I hope it was of value to you. And I think that, uh, again, I think the tax-free might, um, uh, you know, might be seen as something that is not really for everybody. But I hope I put a little bit of excitement into it. And I think for, for saving for your, your children and things like that and for yourself, you know, it is a very, very good option uh, to invest. Thank you very much, Simon.